All right, so we're going to continue on now with part three. We're going to get more into the lighting in this part. Uh, before we do, I just want to quickly go over what I changed compared to the last part. So as far as the lighting goes, that is the same. You can see that I modeled in a little extra detail here with some of these tanks and stuff along the bottom. Now, as far as the material, I played around with that a little bit, made some adjustments to it. And the big thing that I did was I just placed the uh, material that we were using, which was the JPEG texture. I put that in a filter shader in the specular color channel. So all you have to do is just load the image, which was that JPEG image into the texture uh, link here. And then you just use the drop down menu to go down here to filter and it will automatically add that to the filter shader. If you go into the filter shader, I just took the saturation all the way down. And what that does is it produces a black and white image. Then I just enabled clipping down here at the bottom and just made some adjustments to that just to kind of uh, add some contrast to this image because without it, you can see that it looks really washed out, almost as if the uh, contrast has been taken down a lot. So I turned on the clipping option here and made some adjustments to that just to add a lot of contrast to the image. So if we render that, that's what we've got. All right, so I want to talk about the lighting now, more specifically the bounce lights. Now, by default, the rays that are emitted from a light do not bounce by default. As far as I know, the other 3D packages like 3ds Max, Maya, Lightwave, and all those other ones, as far as I know, they do the same thing that Cinema 4D does, which is if you have a light in your scene and you don't have any GI turned on, then there's no bounce that's calculated from the rays. So I'm going to use the two domes at the top of this structure to illustrate this. And I'm probably going to need to use the doodle tool. And bear with me for just a moment. I probably need to take the resolution up. By default, it's rather low. All right, so I'm going to grab a yellow. All right, so we know our sun object is over here. And the sun is emitting rays. Now by default, because we don't have GI turned on, whenever those rays strike something, they stop. They don't bounce. So what that means is the ray will come out from the sun and strike the side of the dome and then stop. That's it. That's as far as the ray will go. But in the real world, it doesn't work like that. In the real world, what happens is light bounces. So what we would get is the first bounce would hit the side of this dome and then we'd have another bounce, which would bounce back and hit somewhere down here along the ground. So that's the way light works in real life. And every time it bounces, it loses a lot of strength. Take, for an example, a long, dark hallway. If you take a really bright light and place it down at the end of the hallway and then look down towards the dark end, it's still dark down there and it's a gradual fall off of the light as it goes down to the other side of the hallway. So this is the way light works in real life. So in order to mimic that behavior, you have to turn on GI, but we're not going to get into all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to fake it. So we're going to use these two domes here for an example. And the reason why I want to use them as the example is if we were to render this, notice here on this dome here on the right, we've got a hot spot that's really bright there that's picking up direct light coming from the sun. Now, in real life, that light should be bouncing and illuminating the back side of this dome, but it's not. It's dark. And even the shadow down here along the uh, top of the structure is dark as well. Okay, so you can see it's not looking all that realistic right now, and that's simply because the shadow is way too dark. It should be slightly illuminated, and this hot spot here should be producing some type of an illumination on the back side of the dome, but it's not. So a quick solution to this problem would be just to throw in some type of a light, say maybe an Omni light, and place it over here near the hotspot. Then enable the fall off for the light and just play around with the fall off, the distance on it, as well as perhaps maybe the intensity of the light. And that should be all you need to do. But I'm gonna show you another method that I've used before in the past. And it doesn't always work, but in this case, I think it'll work really well. Okay, so we need to select the dome, and I wanna turn on the sunlight so we can see it in the viewport. And the reason for that is because I wanna be able to see 
what polygons are being directly struck by the light and you can tell by the hot spot here that's being picked up on the dome it's coming from the light okay so we want to go into polygon mode I'm going to grab the live selection tool and what I want to do is I want to select these polygons along here that are being hit with the light So we'll just select all of those, and I think that'll be enough for now. I want to right click, I want to choose the split command. That's going to split off that geometry, so we'll need to go find it. There it is there. We need to delete the material off of it. Just drag that out. Okay, so we want to create an area light. So we'll create an area light. We'll change the color and make it slightly yellow oranges in color give it area shadow and what we want to do is go into the details tab and we want to change the area shape to object and drag that object down into the link box now one thing that i like to do is take the light drag it and make it a child of the object and then use the psr command that way it'll just center everything together that way if the object is moving the light will stay with it and if you don't know where the PSR command is, you can get to it by going to the character list, character commands, reset PSR. So now what we've done is we have told the area light to emit light from this uh, newly split off geometry that we've created. So if we render this again, clearly this time we've got a whole lot of light here, but it's actually too much. So we're going to need to bring that down. But in order to make it look realistic, we're going to need to give the light some fall off. So we'll come down here to the fall off option and we'll turn that on and we'll set it to inverse square, which is physically accurate. All right, so we'll render one more time. And of course, it's looking a little better, but it's still kind of bright, especially this spot here on the back side of the dome. But you'll notice that we're also picking up some weird little uneven dispersions of light. You can see we're getting an uneven dispersion of light. And you can tell that we're getting these little tiny little specks. I hope you can see them. They're kind of popping up here and there and it just doesn't look very real. Now the reason for this is because we're using inverse square. Now sometimes this issue can be solved by taking the sampling up. Now the sample value here will go from 16 to 1000. So let's take this up to maybe 256. And we'll render it again. Okay, so maybe a little bit better. Let's turn on some anti-aliasing. Let's just try a little spot, see what it looks like. All right, so what we need to do is we need to turn down or actually drag the little orange handle here with the fall off down. All right, so you can see it looks a lot better this time. So what we could do is jump back into the camera just to make sure that the little spot is being picked up from the camera's perspective. So I'll just use an interactive render region Okay, so you can see we're getting an, a little bit of a highlight there on the back side. So what I'll do is I'll take the light and take the fall off up just a little bit. All right, now that looks a lot better. Now, one thing that you need to be careful of, and I'm going to give you a little example of this and show you what I mean. When you're using, I need to turn that off real quick. So whenever you use geometry to emit light using an area light, and you're going to be using the inverse square fall off method, more than likely you're probably going to encounter the problem of uneven light dispersion. So if we were to right click here on samples, go down to show help, and I'll just expand this image here. You can see up here at the top, you can see it's got these little blotchy areas here, and that's being caused by the low sampling. Now, if you take the sampling up, then everything is kind of smoothed out a bit. 
So if you read down here at the bottom, it says this uneven dispersion of light takes place in particular with area lights that clip objects and use functions such as inverse or inverse square. So if you're using this method and you happen to come across the problem of getting these little white dots in these little blotchy areas, the first thing that you can try before changing the fall off method is the samples. You can take that value up and it'll go up to a value of a thousand. So right now a value of 256 seems to be working pretty well for what we're doing. However, in the event that it doesn't, what you could do is change the fall off mode to something else, say maybe linear. But if you do that, more than likely you're going to have to take these orange handles here and drag them out because linear works a little differently. So let me give you a little example here. Let's go back to the camera and let's do the interactive render region again. Okay, now I'm not going to mess with the radius decay value. Instead, all I'm going to do is just change the fall off mode from inverse to linear and watch what happens when I do that. You can see we've lost the illumination on the back side as well as for the shadow. The reason for that is because the linear fall off needs to be pulled out more in order to see it. So what that would mean is we'd have to take these handles here and drag them out in order to expand the fall off in order to pick up the light on the back side of the dome. So that would be all you would have to do and in the case of using linear you're not going to pick up any of those problems uh, which was those little white specks that we encountered earlier which was the uneven dispersion of light. So in the event that you do encounter the problem try to take the samples up first. If that doesn't do it then just change the fall off mode over to linear and then you'll just have to go back and readjust the radius decay value here and more than likely you'll probably have to expand it out greater in order to match the same effect that the inverse square was creating. Alright so that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to share with you guys. I wanted to show you how to use geometry to emit light and how to use proper fall off in order to produce that fake primary bounce. Okay so before I end this what we'll do is we'll just quickly render this to see just how long it takes so let me turn this off and let me check out the anti-aliasing one by two that's fine turn off that light as well as the sun and we've got output which was 1080 now remember on the first image uh, that i showed you which was done by another guy it took three minutes on his machine and he had global illumination and ao turned on took three minutes where as you can see I've only got two lights in the scene the third one is being used with fall off to fake the bounce light and you can see it took 15 seconds so there we go so that pretty much wraps up this lesson on space lighting this is basically the same thing that I did for the destiny model uh, one thing that I just now noticed that I forgot to show was the little landing strip lights, which was the blue lights that I had here on this deck. So if we take a look at my original render, you can see I've got these blue lights here, like uh, landing strip lights, as well as these orange lights here up on the wall. And I did the same thing here as I did up here with the primary bounce light. I took some small spheres and I placed them around and then I just assigned those to lights, to uh, area lights. And then I just changed the color of the area light. I gave it inverse square fall off and shrunk it down. And that's all I did. So the same thing that I did up here with the primary bounce is the same identical thing that I did with the small spheres here for the small blue lights as well as these orange ones here up on the wall. All right, so that about wraps up this lesson. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And as always, I will see you guys in the next tutorial.